Coral Island's Kickstarter was probably one of the most ambitious Kickstarters I have ever seen. And if we're being honest, I was pretty skeptical. Their Kickstarter is actually still up right now. And do you know what the crazy part is? They genuinely might have done it. I think they managed to achieve everything they said they wanted to. This game literally from the get-go promised everything we have been crying out for in the farming sim genre. A genre that despite having plenty of games released in it every single year, has seemingly made no progress. Since its release, Stardew has more or less been the benchmark for every farming sim to be compared to. And finally, after six years, I feel like we finally have a contender for a new standard of farming sim. So here's why I think you might want to pick up Coral Island and add it to your collection of cozy games. Coral Island released on the 11th in early access and despite the fact next year when it launches in full it will be on every single console including the Nintendo Switch, right now you can only get it on PC either through Steam or by Microsoft Game Pass. Everything we cover in today's video is the state of the game right now. As I'm filming it, it is the 12th of October and the game has only received a couple of patches. So we've had none of the big updates that have been promised in the roadmap and this is the least amount of content this game will ever have. I just want to point out something I noticed over the last couple of days that's given me so much hope. We've received a minimum of three patches come out for the game already. Granted, one of those updates did break the game, but less than two hours later, they gave a hot fix that fixed everything and it's all working again. Given the amount of people who have downloaded this game, I am pretty impressed with the speed at which they're fixing their mistakes. And hopefully this continues over the entire year of early access period. And as sad as I am that this game is not currently out on the Nintendo Switch, I think having looked at Disney Dreamlight Valley, this might have been the smart way to go. From everything you've seen in the game so far, you're probably thinking to yourself, what makes this so much better and so much different from every single farming sim we've already seen? Let's get into it. First of all, this is easily one of the prettiest farming sims I have ever played. Now, granted, my PC is pretty powerful, so we've got the graphics on max for absolutely everything. But man, it looks gorgeous. And yeah, I know our character is a little stiff with their movements. But I'm in love with not only how the world looks, but also the chonky animals. And can we just admire how stunning the artwork is for each and every character? And speaking of characters, that's another thing I'm in love with in this game, as there are over 70 NPCs to talk to. So despite the absolutely huge map that seems to take a lifetime to walk around, the town and the area still feels full of life. The characters are diverse in every single aspect and my face literally lit up when I saw one of the characters with stretch marks. The developers have really put such attention to detail in each and every part of this game. The writing combined with the artwork made each and every person feel real. On top of all of this, the game also gives you a slider that lets you decide how long you want each in-game day to last. I currently have my game time on the slowest setting, which kind of works out to be about 40 minutes in the real world per day. But you can literally change it whenever you want. So if you're stood around waiting for something to happen, you can just speed up the game for a little bit until you reach what time you need. I just love the idea of not being rushed in a farming sim, so I have been loving the slow day approach. Most of the time when people speak about this game, they speak about everything that is coming when the game is finished. But what can you actually do in early access? So far, there is one whole year of story content to be had. The story revolves around trying to clean up the town after a huge oil spill happened, not only damaging the ecosystem, but also the town and its reputation. And it's up to you to try and fix the town and prevent the oil companies from buying it and taking it over. But don't worry, you're not completely alone in this mission. You have some otherworldly help. We're not going to go into it too much. I feel like this is where the fun of the game is to be had, is exploring and learning about the story. So you're just going to have to experience that part for yourself. And once I got past my initial eye roll at the fact that you're taking over your parents' old farm, I really enjoyed the story elements I've seen so far. Another thing I love is that as you help and fix up the town, the town's rank increases. 
Every time this happens, new opportunities open up within the town. Like for example, when the town reached E rank, a new clothing store opened up with brand new clothes for you to buy. The cool thing about it is you can kind of take it at your own pace. Setting the speed of every day in the game to be faster means you get the story elements more often. Whereas slowing it down like I've been playing it allows you to also do loads of the farming stuff alongside everything you need to do for the story. And I love the general environmental theme of the game. I think they've implemented it in a really nice way. The game also allows you right now to do all of the classic farming sim stuff. There's over 70 plantables, including classics and some native to Asia, as this is where the entire game is set. And right from the get go, you do have quite a variety of seeds in the early game. You can also house animals. These include cows, chickens, duck, sheep, pigs, which by the way, roll around in the mud in front of you, which I absolutely adore. You can also get llamas and luwaks too on your farm. There's also the big mine shafts to go and explore. Down there you can find ore, which you need to progress the story. You can also get gems and battle slimes. I also like the idea that if you make it to the end of one shaft, a new shaft opens up that you're allowed to then go and explore. I'm not gonna lie though, I haven't spent a lot of time mining. The real part I've been enjoying in the last few game days has been diving. I wasn't 100% sure that the diving was even going to be in the early access game, as on the roadmap it mentioned diving coming in an update, but it is actually here. I can't really pinpoint why, but I've had so much fun just kind of bobbing around cleaning up the ocean, and it's made me so excited for the Mer People update. On top of doing all of this, you can also socialize as there's a friendship mechanic. I will be honest though, I haven't spent a lot of time socializing or trying to make friends in the game, so I haven't actually increased friendship enough to see if there's any cutscenes when you do that. So I guess that's something I'm going to have to find out soon. But definitely the hardest part of Coral Island is deciding which of the 20 plus eligible bachelors or bachelorettes you will be looking to date. Because so far, my list has been narrowed down to eight of them. I keep on trying to make it lower, but I can't. And every now and again, one of these villagers will come to your house and kind of set you on a quest that will generally help your progress and your skills with your farm. I kind of like this as it kind of gives you stuff to do every day along with the quest to do for the overarching story. On top of all of this, there's also a museum you can start filling too. And even in early access, there seems to be quite a lot of bugs and fish to catch. By the way, the fishing is not nearly as bad as Stardew. It's actually quite relaxing. Although I did struggle with the bug catching. I'm not very sneaky. Through finding chests and getting them opened at the blacksmith, you can also kind of find these artifacts which you can submit to the museum. And later on, there's the option to have a museum expansion. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is available in the early access or not, but it looks like it'll allow you to have fossils as well. The game's also implemented a ton of quality of life features. Like, I love the fact there's no crafting bench. You can just do it from your pockets. And when you're processing goods in the machines, you can do it in bulk. After a little bit, you can also unlock the ability to fast travel. As of this video, there is no controller support still, but at least when you play with the mouse, there's quite a big reach from where your player is standing. So it makes watering and harvesting crops that little bit easier. And yes, like all good farming sims, you can upgrade your tools. And in addition to all of this, there's also festivals. And I feel like although this is one of the most unpolished parts of the whole of early access so far, it's also already one of my favorites. The festival itself that I experienced was so much fun. There was a little shop with limited edition items. There was also a potluck, which admittedly wasn't doable, but I love the fact that it's going to be implemented. There was even a super fun mini game that I absolutely sucked at. And honestly, the thing that made it to me was how full of life the festival was. There were so many characters there. Now, the parts that came across slightly unpolished was the fact that when I arrived to the festival an hour early by mistake, everyone was dotted around but standing completely still. They were all just stood there waiting for the festival to start, which was low-key freaky when you kind of feel like everyone's real. And of course, I have experienced some bugs myself. This is an early access game. You do expect there to be some. 
I had an incident where a townsperson was missing their entire torso. I also found a T-posing character that just said enter text here. The game has also been close to crashing a number of times where it's been dropping frames and completely freezes. And crashing's not great for someone like me who sets the game to the slowest possible time, meaning that you could lose up to 40 minutes of progress if the game crashes. And if we're being honest, there's probably a ton of bugs in the game that I just haven't experienced yet that many other people will be reporting. Unfortunately, that's just the way of early access. However, as I said at the beginning, they do genuinely seem really good at trying to address these. But right now, despite all of the bugs, for less than $25, I really feel like this is great value for money. And this kind of reminds me of early Animal Crossing. You're buying a game with a guaranteed one plus years of updates. And yeah, some of those updates are going to be bug fixing. There's going to be more festivals. There's going to be mer people and a mer city. You're going to be able to get married and have children in later updates. And once the game is fully launched, they'll even have a multiplayer update as well. For me, these types of games are always made better when you have a new reason to log back in and play the game. So I genuinely see the fact that it's in early access to kind of be a plus. I cannot wait for this game to come to the Nintendo Switch. I think it'll be perfect to play in bed. And if you want an in-detailed look at the entire roadmap of updates coming to the game, click this link here. I'll see you next time. Bye.